Good day to you. It's good to be here with you. Uh, today we are going to look at the conclusion of James chapter 4. And I'm going to invite y'all to help me, if you could, uh, what my view of a preacher is. I'm trying to reach more people with the Word of God. And if you could like and share this message, it would be great. If you don't like it, would you please, you can really talk to me. I'd like to know why. Uh, my phone number, my email, my address, uh, you can do any of those and uh, I'll be willing to uh, talk to you because I am trying to help people to see the Word of God. So what do we have to do? And I like to start with basically where we ended last week in verse 10, I think it's a summary. Verse 10 is a summary of the first half of, of this of this chapter. And I think it's the heart, maybe of all of the teachings of the book of James, if that makes sense in some way. It says this, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself. Uh, humility is something that I, th I don't think that is something that by nature we have. It is something with the help of God we learn. It's a nature in us, but it's a nature that we can cover up, get rid of, or we can use it and grow in it. I'm still growing in it. <laughs> and I think that's what we always have to do is to grow in our humility. I say that because now we, we look at the subject of, of the end of this chapter. In verse 11, it says, Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. We are not to do what we are not. Notice it says, do not speak evil of one another. We can look at, so oftentimes it's easy, e easy to see the shortcomings of others. Evil, and by the way, evil is not always speaking a lie. It's speaking the truth in a bad way can also be evil you know so oftentimes somebody says something good about someone but I've heard people say but if you knew him well what do you know you know you see you you sell that doubt they should sell that shortcoming of judging someone even though uh, they are doing we are not to do that why well the next verse it says there is one lawgiver who is, a, who is able to save and to destroy. There is how many? There is one law giver. The law giver is God. He used Christ to give some of it to us, but it's, it's the law giver is, is God. When Jesus spoke, he spoke for his father, right? That's what he did. He spoke for his father. And we can see there's one law giver who are you to judge another? I go out and, and some people say, well, you teach the Bible. I teach the Bible. I do. I think people must follow the Bible. But the thing about it is I teach the Bible and I expect, yes, God expects the people to follow their own understanding of the Bible. I've had people ask me, well, what do you think it is saying? I said, it's not important to you what I think it's saying. What do you think it is saying? That's what is my, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you what to believe about the Bible. I can show you the Bible. I can teach you the word of God, but you have to understand it yourself. Somebody said, don't, don't you save people? No, I can't. I do not save people. I cannot save people. I give them 
the recipe, which is God's word, to save themselves through the blood of Christ. That's the law. I cannot tell them. And I've had people ask me, well, what do you think? Well, you need to put more thought in that question. <laughs> because you need to go and realize there is one lawgiver. And it's not me. It says this, come now, verse 13. Come now, you who say, or well, today or tomorrow, we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there buying and selling and, and making a profit. People are saying, I'm going to decide what I'm going to do. Basically, they said, I'm going to go and I'm going to make a profit. Somebody says, that's the power of positive thinking. Well, it's the power so oftentimes if we don't watch out, it can be the power of failure too. I'm going to try. I'm going to do my best. You can say that. But we do not know the conclusion of what we are going to do. The Bible does. Jesus says all works for good for those that love the Lord. It doesn't say everything's going to work out everything we do for good, but at the end, it's going to be good. You know, the thing about it is, there's going to be times that we were, no matter what we are doing, we will stub our toes, as the old saying is. But God will not allow us not to finish the race if we don't give up the race. Here it says, come now. You say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there buying and selling and making a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow? We don't know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanish away. We do not know our, our life. We do not even know when we are going to die. When we are going to leave this body. There's very few people, very few people that knows when. Somebody said, some do know. Well, they tell them they can change their mind and that's the people in prison on death row. And I, I have known, you know, sometimes they get a stay of execution. So even to the last minute, some of them waiting for stay, that is putting it off to later, that happens. We do not know. We cannot say what we're going to do. We can, we can say, well, if God's will, I'm going to try to be there. I'm going to try to do that. I've had a man we invite to a meeting and said, well, you're going to be there. He said, God willing, I will be. Because he knows he cannot promise. Nobody can promise what we will be or if we will be tomorrow. But we have to have the knowledge that our life is a vapor that appears for a little while then vanish away. God, Jesus came not so that we would live on earth forever, but when we die, we will be forever in heaven with God. That's what we are insured of. It says this, instead, you say, don't say that, but he said, you ought to say, if the Lord dwelleth, we shall live and do this and that. If the Lord what? If the Lord's will. Here on earth, I can tell you what I want to do. I cannot tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> well, yes, the only thing I can say is I'm, I will die. <laughs> I can tell you what I want to do. If the Lord's willing, I'm going to have another program next week. If the Lord's willing, it's going to be on the book of James. And if the Lord's willing, I'm hoping that you too will be alive and can listen to it. But I can't guarantee it either way. But I'm going to, if the Lord's willing, be here. It says this, But now you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Boasting. We should not boast, make promises, that for sure we are going to do something. We cannot do that. We can say, I am going to what? I am going to try. If the Lord's willing, I'm going to do that. 
I, uh, you know, had one congregation that I went to, and they hired me. They said, now, we hired you now. What kind of programs are you going to bring here that, that's going to work? I looked up and said, what? Well, the last preacher had this program, this program, listed program, and came and was going to work. And, and I looked at them and said, and how long did he stay? And they said, not two years. I said, well, let me say this. I don't even know this town. I don't know y'all. I don't know what I want to be able to do. I, don't, I can't tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do the best I can to help and reach people with the gospel. But I have no plans. I promise them nothing but to try and see what the Lord's will was for that. Because we cannot make promises. We can say we are going to do all that we can, but we cannot promise anything but one thing. I'm going to succeed in trying for God. Brethren, friends, neighbors, I want you to look at God's will. Look at his word. Or, and know his will, I should have said. And you can be able to try and know that God will listen. And God can and will be with you, but his will will be done. And he will be with you. And in the last of this, it says, Therefore, to him that knowest to do good, and do it as not, <laughs> do not do it, to him it is sin. He that knoweth to do good. I say that, and God said that, I think, because some people say, well, why should I even worry about it? If, you know, if, if I can't say I'm going to do it, then why should I even try? Because we do good even though we don't know the outcome. We, nothing is going to be done if we do not try. It's like used to my uncle we would stay home from school in Oklahoma we could be out to help in the farm and one day every spring my cousin and I we would stay home and we would just tell them we're going to stay home tomorrow to plant watermelons and they said okay and I can remember uncle we did it by hand about five ten acres of watermelons but he always told us to go to the hill step out so many and he always told us, he said, now plant three seeds in each hill. You know, me being just a, a teenager, I said, why? He said, well, one, one for the bugs, one for the birds, and one to grow. <laughs> I, I laughed. He said, I said, well, what happens if they all come up? He said, well, I can always come and pick them later, you know, but we need to plant. Uh, you know, we do the Lord's work. We plant the seed. The seed's the word of God. And sometimes the seed will not come up. Sometimes, sometimes it just won't come up. Sometimes it will come up and a bird come along and, and take it out. We call sin or a sinner will get in the way and, and then hurt a new, a new child of God. And sometimes we can plant and the whole hill won't have any fact. But so often, and it happened much, that I can remember planting those seeds in that watermelon field, then coming back in the, in the early fall, late summer, and looking out there and seeing all those melons. You know, I felt good. I had helped plant those melons. And look at them now. I'm comparing, yes, I'm comparing melons to people because if we do good that will happen if we don't do good then it won't would I have been in trouble if me and my cousin would have went in and told the principal we're going to plant watermelons and then he would have went to town for something and saw us coming out of the theater or some kind of game park would we been in trouble yes for what we done, well, no, not really, but because we didn't do what we claim we was going to, we was going to do, us and you as a Christian. 
you are saying as a Christian. When you come up, you are born, when you go into the water of grave of baptism and you come up, you are a new creature, right? You see that. But whose creature are you? <laughs> are you the devil's or God's? God be with you. And don't forget to plant those seeds. Amen.